Greetings, folks. Um, it's Naveen again. Uh, let's continue the journey of, uh, in, uh, in our journey of data science, let's talk uh, about a new topic called uh, big data today. And we'll get a brief introduction about what is big data, guys, okay? So here is a big data uh, landscape, guys. It seems uh, right from the beginning of the time till, uh, the, till about 2003, uh, the entire mankind uh, has generated about five exabytes of data. Some of you may already have an idea, one terabyte equals to 1000 GB and uh, 1000 terabytes equals to one petabyte and then comes uh, 1000 petabytes which is equal to one exabyte guys okay so uh, right from the beginning of time till 2003 the entire mankind whatever data uh, that we have generated the mankind has started to learn document the data and if we were to put all the data together digitize the data and put together at one place it seems that's about five exabytes guys okay and then what happened is starting from 20, 2010 2012 approximately every two days it seems we have been generating the same amount of data which is about five exabytes of data guys okay so in other words in a year we are generating about 2.7 zettabytes of data right from the beginning of 2010-2012, guys, okay? So what it means is if we compare 5 exabytes to what is uh, 2.7 zettabytes, what the entire mankind has generated up to 2003, every two days we are generating, guys, okay? What that means is the amount of data that we are generating as of today is not double, not 10 times, not 100 times or thousand times but it is to the power of something else or in other words that's an exponential growth of volume of data guys okay that is referred as the volume of the data fundamentally what we are looking at is the first v uh, which is the volume okay it is exponentially huge and exponentially um, you know it's exponential in proportion is what is happening guys okay and the fact if we closely observe that uh, statement, uh, the fact that every two days we are generating the amount of data uh, refers. What that means is the speed at which, the rate at which we are generating the data uh, every two days is exponentially huge. What that means is the velocity, guys, which is generally referred as the second V. Okay, so the first V is the volume, which is exponentially huge, and the second V is the speed, which is referred as the velocity. And then comes, uh, we may be wondering, you know, where this amount of data is coming from. Well, that is, you know, today internet has become the new source of data, internet and other sources of data. Other sources of data includes our log files and other kinds of files, guys, the text file, documents and so on. These have become the other sources of data, okay. Traditionally, the database was the place where uh, enterprises were going and trying to get some information or get some insights guys okay so the traditional data database is or the database is like the reverse of the world the the data which is in the database in the world is about 10 to 20 percent of the data and the data which is outside the reverse or, or the water which is outside the reverse which is in seas and oceans is about 80 to 90 percent guys okay so internet and other sources have become your new sources of data or your seas and oceans of the world guys okay as a fisherman we go to the reverse, we try to find the fish, okay? So, if we can find fish in reverse, we can find more fish in seas and oceans is what the fact is, guys, okay? In other words, we can find more insights. Traditionally, the companies, the businesses and the enterprises are finding insights from database and today, the promise is we can find more insights by going to the internet and analyzing other sources of data is what is the third way. But, but when we go on to internet and things like that, where is the data coming? from well that is what is the variety guys okay what is the variety well you may have Facebook you may have Twitter you may have other social networking sites and so on what happens well that is where the data is getting generated people are writing comments each website may uh, open up their data in the form of API's and their so, uh, Twitter may prefer to open up their data in the form of a JSON object. A JSON is a JavaScript object notation, guys, okay? It's similar to the XML data and Facebook may expose XML data. And what happens is everybody has their own way of exposing the data and that is what refers to the variety, okay? Traditionally, we're either going to SQL Server or Oracle or MySQL. But today, the data that we get, we may not have any idea about it, okay? What is that? That is unstructured data and that is what is the variety the third way. Fundamentally, 
Big data refers to the three Vs and here is a quick uh, example of Twitter. They process about 340 million messages weekly. So if you were to compare a couple of database administrators talking to each other a couple of years back, one would tell other, hey, you know, my database size is very high and they, they might say uh, my database grew uh, from maybe 1 GB uh, in one month to maybe uh, 500 GB by the end of the year. That would be uh, how a conversation would look like if there are a couple of database administrators talking to each other guys, okay. But as of today, what is happening is in a single day, we are able to get multiple terabytes of data in a single day guys, okay. It is an exponentially huge volume of data and exponential velocity is what is happening guys. We have Facebook about 2.7 billion likes and then we have Amazon S3 which is capable of storing about 1 billion objects a week guys, okay. So today the data is no longer measured in GBs but it is going beyond terabytes, petabytes and uh, zettabytes guys, okay. So that is a little bit uh, of uh, big data landscape and here are the 5 V's of big data. The volume, the velocity, the variety, the veracity and the value guys, okay. Digging a li little bit deep, here is the volume, it is the exponential growth of the data. The data could be the data in the database or the data could be the data in uh, other sources which is internet or maybe other log files or the text documents and so on. It could be uh, the events or the transaction data and things like that. And today we are going beyond uh, the, the gigabytes, we are entering in the world of terabytes and petabytes and exabytes is what refers to the volume guys. And then comes the variety, the structured data and unstructured data. Remember structured data is like the reverse of the world guys, okay. Companies are like the fishermen and they want to go to the reverse to find the fish, okay. What is happening? Well, there is a new kid in the blog, the internet and the other sources which we are referring as unstructured data guys, okay. Structured data, generally we know everything about the data. If you take data in the database, it is called the structured data. Why do we say we know everything? Well, you know the tables, you know the column names, we have designed it, we know the relationships, we know the constraints. That is what is called the schema of the database uh, guys, okay. When you know the schema of the data that can be thought of as a structured data. Whereas when we go on to uh, internet, let us say we want to download the past 10 years of data from Twitter and we want to analyze it, we want to understand the patterns, the trends, the words which are occurring the most and things like that. What happens? Well, that is where we do not know the column names, the data types and anything. That is what uh, we mean by we do not know the schema. When we do not know the schema, that is what is meant by unstructured data guys, okay. And it might also include the audio, video data or, or other kinds of binary data that is out there is also referred as the unstructured data. That is what refers to the variety. Moving on, the velocity, the fact that every two days we are generating the entire data that the entire mankind has generated is what refers to the velocity guys, okay. And uh, every two days again we are generating what the entire mankind has generated up to 2003. What that means is the speed at which the data is coming is exponentially huge. And then comes the Veracity. Veracity is the truthfulness of the data. I mean, you, you, we are probably analyzing, uh, let us say there is a Honda and a Toyota company and somebody in Honda power writing some tweets versus Toyota writing some tweets. You know, they are saying the Honda is good, they are saying the Toyota is good. But the Honda guys may start tweeting saying that, hey, Toyota uh, is not good and things like that. So, really they are, you know, they are not being truthful in saying the uh, that one. So, we have to we, we, we have to know what is truthful, what is not truthful, what is trustworthy and what is not tr trustworthy guys, okay. That is what is the truthfulness and that is also referred as the veracity of the data, the variability, you know, we do not know, um, you know, if, the, if it is truthful or not. The quality and accuracy uh, is again, you know, the, 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 the less truthful, less uh, uh, accurate it is uh, also refers to the veracity of the data guys, okay. Moving on. Uh, the value of all these V's, why do we, what is, what is it which is important? Well, the companies or the organizations, they want to get the value. They want to monetize their data and get some value out of it. The, uh, the, the, that is what the fifth V is, which is the value. They want to remove the noise, they want to remove the signal and they want to be able to quantify it. They, they may have a lot of data and data is like the crude oil guys, okay. And from this data, we need to get the insights, which is like we need to get the fuel. Uh, the refined fuel which we want to use in our 
vehicles and things like that. It's like saying, you know, there's a lot of raw data and we want to be able to get the insight. So, once we clean that raw data, that is what is the noise uh, is what we are referring here. And then once we get the insights, they should be actionable. In other words, once you find some useful insights, if you're not able to take any action, it's not really useful. That is what we mean by quantifiable business value, guys, okay? So, those are the five V's of the big data. So, moving on, what is big data and what is the challenge? So, as long as your our data fits on a single computer, right? We can write a traditional Java or a .NET program, guys, okay? We can store the data, we can go ahead and process the data, no problem. But what happens as the size of the data grows, you know, as, the, as we are moving into the world of terabytes and petabytes, our data is not going to fit on a single computer. What we do, need to do is, we need to take our data, put part of the data here, put part of the data on another node, another node, and things like that. Each node is one server. One server is like one computer, guys, okay? So, in other words, when we have big data, or large amounts of data, we go ahead and split our data, distribute our data in multiple nodes. In other words, 10 nodes, 100 nodes and in some cases, as the size of the data grows, it might be in thousands of nodes. Of. So, what do we need to do? The first and the foremost thing is we need to store the data. Once we store the data, we need to then process the data, okay? What do we want to process? Well, we want to analyze the data. We want to get some useful insights. Remember, data is like the crude oil and from the crude oil, we want to get the petrol or the fuel, which is used for fueling our mopeds and cars and things like that, guys. That is the insights, right? So, we want to process and analyze the data. So, what happens? Well, as long as the data fits on a single computer, it is straightforward. But when multiple nodes, multiple servers come into picture, what happens is we need to be an expert in understanding how multiple nodes communicate with each other. It's called as multi-node communication. When Then we also need to understand how the process inside these servers communicate with each other. That is called uh, multi-process communication. We need to understand if one of the server goes down, what needs to be done? Well, that is called um, fault tolerance. And we also need to have an idea of networking and many other concepts, guys, okay? So, it's like saying we need to be a mechanical engineer to drive a car. And if that were to be true, a lot of people who are driving the cars would not be out there. Or in other words, many people who are not mechanical engineers are driving the car today, okay? So, what is the problem? Well, only if you are an expert in all these things, then only we can work with big data. What do we do with big data? First thing is store the data, then process it to analyze and get some insights, guys, okay? So, fundamentally, that is what the gist of this slide is. We need, these are the challenges of the big data, guys, okay? Moving on, the challenge, um, if we were to take the cost of the data a few years back, in 1997, about 2.2 bytes of data would cost about 157 US dollars. And as the years passed by in 2004, 200 GB of data would cost about 1.05 US dollars. So, you can see how much price decrease is going on. So, in other words, as years are passing by, what is happening is the cost of storage is coming down and our capacity to store the data is increasing, guys. Okay. In other words, um, and again, if we come back to 2012, we can store about 3 terabytes of data at the cost of about 0.05. Uh, US dollars. So, again, as the years are passing by, our capacity to store the data is increasing and the cost of the data to store the data is coming down, guys, okay? So, this performance also increased in the last 15 years. In other words, the, the performance of the disk, how much we can read from a disk and write on a disk is also increasing. But unfortunately, the transfer rates have not kept pace with increasing capacity, but the transfer rates have not changed a lot, guys, okay? So, here's a quick look. In 1997, it would take about uh, 2.1 gigabytes of data, a transfer rate of 16.6 .6 and about 126 seconds is what it would take to read about 2 gigabytes of data. As of today, which is about, we can read about 3 terabytes of data um, in about 3.5 minutes or close to 4 minutes is what it is, guys, okay? Moving on, so that's where it comes in. Hadoop, Hadoop is the solution to the big data. What does Hadoop do? Well, big data, two problems, storing is one problem and processing is one problem. And to understand, to solve the problem of big data, we need to be mechanical engineers. What does Hadoop do? Well, Hadoop comes in and says, well, he, if you have a car called big data, I have a key. What is the key? Well, you turn the key, your car starts. Or in other words, we can store the big data and we can also process the big data. We can analyze the big data and we can get some insights out of that, guys, okay? In other words, Hadoop is a solution to the big data is what you can think of. It is a framework 
it allows for distributed storage and distributed processing guys okay remember distributed storage is very difficult distributed processing is very very difficult i would say distributed storage like is like a mechanical engineering distributed process is like rocket science so what does hadoop do hadoop says you don't have to be a mechanical engineer or a rocket scientist to work on big data i will give you the key to the car what do you do you turn the key what happens your petrol gets converted to electricity and drives the car okay so in other words we don't have to learn the concepts of multi node multi process threading networking and other complex concepts and yet be able to work with big data guys okay it works on clusters of commodity computers so in other words we don't a cluster is a group of computers guys it could be one it could be 10 100 or 1000 they are all cheap servers we don't need enterprise class servers and one of the main difference between enterprise class server and a cheap server is enterprise class server is something which gives you more reliability and guarantee whereas a cheap commodity server is something which does not give you that um high reliability and guarantee they can fail in a time but what does hadoop do hadoop takes care of that hadoop internally provides a concept called fault tolerance where it backs up our data it distributes our data on multiple servers and should one of the servers go down it will automatically go ahead and allow us to access the data from uh, other servers is what the fault tolerance guys it also provides us a simple programming model called mapreduce mapreduce could be done could be written in multiple one is java one is hive one is pig while java is very low level hive and pig are high high level uh, mapreduce programming or high level uh, languages which will allow us to write uh, the java mapreduce code or in other words hive will take sql as input and internally convert it to java mapreduce programs guys okay so as a result of that we don't have to be an expert in java to work on big data and to store the data and to process the data hive and pig uh, can be referred as the eyes of the uh, hadoop guys okay with our eyes we are analyzing the world so hive and pig are used for analyzing the big data is what it is it is open source it is free it takes care of the data management again the data storage and the processing more precisely distributed data storage and distributed processing with scale out storage the more the servers we add the more the power we get guys it, that is referred as horizontal scaling if we have some data we can add more power to a single computer and try to get more out of it and uh, in other words we can add more ram we can more add more processors and get more performance out of that but there is always a limit how much you can increase a single computer whereas what hadoop does is instead of that is called vertical scaling as the process of increasing the power and the performance on a single computer uh, by adding more ram and processors is called vertical scaling or uh, scale up is what is referred as whereas hadoop instead of scaling up we will scale out in other words we will add more number of computers to increase our processing power and to reduce our processing time guys okay this is about more precisely again distributed processing that is what hadoop is about moving on again it's a distributed file system guys okay what is a distributed file system well putting it simply a distributed file system is a group of computers they act like one computer okay so our data is going to be sitting on 10 100 or 1000 nodes for us it is like it's as if it's sitting on a single computer that is what the magic of the distributed file system is guys okay so in this example what we are doing is we're considering one machine assuming we have about four io channels or four hard drives and we're able to read about 100 megabytes per second and let's say we have a task of reading 1 terabyte of data what do we do well with one machine we may take about 43 minutes okay but if you use 10 machines we can do the same task in 4.3 minutes guys what that means is as we are adding more number of servers our processing power is increasing and our processing time or the computation time is reducing and what's happening the group of computers together is referred as the distributed file system guys with that i will wrap it up here for today and we will meet in the next session again so stay tuned for more sessions guys thank you again from naresh it mm -hmm.